I'm Steve Williams and this is Scooter in the Sticks. It's a beautiful day out today. Blue skies, temperatures in the 40s, perfect winter riding weather. But because I uh, tweaked a nerve in my lower back and my leg hurts, I think it's best I stay home. What I wanted to talk about today is riding and being honest, or maybe more specifically, being honest about riding. I've learned a lot of things over the years about myself and honesty while I'm riding, and uh, while it applies to me specifically, there may be something you can take from it as well. And I'm hoping that whether you're a new rider, a beginning rider, an old rider, or anyone in between, you'll find something of value. Compared to lifelong riders, I've not been at this very long. I rode dirt bikes for a few years as a kid, then nothing, until I bought my first Vespa 33 years later. I've learned a lot riding during the past 18 years on scooters and motorcycles. A lot of it has been pure fun, and at times I felt exhilaration I can only label as joy. Many lessons have emerged during my time on the road. Perhaps the most startling has been learning to question whether I'm honest. Honesty is one of those words that's easy to define, yet not always easy to live up to. As it relates to riding, I'm not referring to lying. No officer, I wasn't speeding, or no honey, I didn't buy another motorcycle. What I'm talking about is the kind of lying I can do to myself. The denial and delusion that can easily trap me on a potentially dangerous road. As a rider, especially one who's getting older, lying to myself about my abilities, health, strength, balance, eyesight, and a host of other potential challenges is a pretty good ticket to trouble. Almost eight years ago, I had a heart attack, an event which forced upon me an investigation into the way I was living. If you want to know what it's like to have a heart attack, I've left a link in the description to a blog post I wrote while I was in the intensive care unit. I remember talking with my cardiologist about cardiac rehab and the changes I would have to make if I wanted to keep on breathing, and by extension, to keep on riding. I came face to face with the need to be honest rather than rationalize what I wanted, deny the truth, or delude myself into believing something that was false. The conversation with the doctor included some heartening news. Things like over 80% of men who suffered the kind of heart attack I did would go on to have a second one within a year. That got my attention. He went on to say that was the case because most men once they feel a little better, stop taking their medication, don't change their diet, exercise patterns, or stress level. In short, he was telling me that if I wander off on the same road that brought me to the emergency room, I was likely to have trouble. He went on to stress the good fortune I had to have the heart attack in the emergency room. And with him happening to be there at the same time, allowing for a quick trip to the catheterization lab to clear the 100% blockage to an artery leading to my heart. It meant I had almost no damage to the heart muscle and I would feel pretty good pretty fast. Fortunate circumstances for me. And then he went on to tell me something that might affect riding. 
Had I stayed at home when I didn't feel right and had the heart attack at home, by the time I got to the hospital, the damage to my heart would have been severe. Had I crawled into bed and went to sleep, I would have not woken up the next morning to ride again. Had I been in one of the remote areas I like to ride, that has no cell coverage, I would have died along the road. A lot of information and a challenge to my ability to be honest about my life moving forward and about riding. It shouldn't take a heart attack to move anyone to start making a sober assessment of their life and the risk they're willing to take. In my current position in my riding journey, I work pretty hard to be diligent about the, my physical capabilities, especially as I get older. Uh, one of the reasons I sold my BMW K75 and uh, downsized to this motorcycle was because the BMW was getting really heavy, cumbersome. Not so much to ride it, but all that slow speed maneuvering, pushing it around, and uh, should I drop it, I was a little worried I'd never be able to pick it up. So I think, uh, you know, part of me being honest is to not be like, have a death grip on my expectations of myself or what I should be riding to say, well, if I can't ride this motorcycle, or I can't ride this scooter, then I'm not going to ride anymore. And part of me being honest has just been able to accept the changes that happen in my life and uh, move on from there. And God forbid, should they ever consider a scooter. Maybe I'm fortunate that I started riding a scooter and discovered the joys and magic of riding one. So downsizing isn't much of an issue for me. I just need to be honest about my limitations, my desires, and whatever baggage I might be carrying around regarding what it means to be a man who rides. We're not all blessed with genetics that will allow us to cross the continent on a full dress Harley at age 90. I don't have a crystal ball, so I have no idea what my future will hold. So as my days unfold, I'll work to be an honest rider and not avoid any bad news that may come my way. I can only fight if I realize there's a battle ahead. As a younger rider, I was honest enough to not let my ego call the shots and convince myself that riding dirt bikes as a kid was any kind of intelligent preparation 33 years later for riding on the highway with other vehicles. Honesty requires me to have a measure of humility to admit things. Things like, I don't know, and I need help. That kind of honesty led me to the MSF beginner course and then the advanced course. It keeps me practicing things like swerving, braking, and low speed maneuvers, and assessing my skills and tolerance for everything related to riding. Honesty intrudes in all sorts of ways. Choices of how fast I will ride, when I will ride, where I'll ride. Making informed, deliberate choices has allowed me to enjoy tens of thousands of miles of pleasant rides. My ego securely chained to a tree and risk managed as diligently as possible. I can already hear the comments. Um, what are you talking about? That's so limiting, such a constrictive way of riding. Or maybe someone says, what are you talking about? You ride in snow and ice and winter weather. Are you a hypocrite? <laughs> it's an interesting question. Am I a hypocrite? Or am I honest? Maybe I'm just half honest. But seriously though, I try to be honest when I ride. Whether you're going to decide to ride down the freeway at 150 miles an hour, or whether I decide I'm going to go for a ride on a 
freezing snowy day on my scooter, I try to do so being completely honest about the risk I'm taking, what the possible repercussions are, and I don't just wander off mindlessly when I do things. And each of us as riders have to learn to make our own decisions based on our skill, our experience, the machinery we have, the gear we have, the environment we're riding in. And that's what I'm talking about when I say I need to learn to be honest with myself when I ride. Whatever the answers are, I believe the more honest I can be when I'm looking in the mirror, the better the outcomes and the longer I'll be able to ride. That's my story and I'm sticking with it. That wraps up this episode of Scooter in the Sticks. As always, I wish you well and be safe on the road.